Welcome to the deep dive. We're going deep today into the world of lithium. Yes, lithium. Specifically, the global lithium race. Right. We'll be focusing on what the 2025 market looks like, the pricing, the geopolitics of it all, mm. and the major players, of course. You bet. The US, Canada, Australia, Germany, big players. Huge. We'll be drawing our insights from an expert discussion, really getting into the nitty gritty of the lithium landscape as it stands right now in 2025. It's a complex landscape. It really is. We're going to make it clear for you. Absolutely. We want you to walk away understanding who the dominant forces are in this industry, where they stand, and what factors have gotten them there. That's the goal. So the big question we're tackling in this deep dive is who is actually winning this lithium race and what are the crucial elements that are pushing them ahead? Big questions. Big, important questions. Okay, let's dive right in. So first things first, the lithium market in 2025. The pricing has been, well, a bit of a roller coaster, hasn't it? It has. Those peaks we saw back in 2022 and 2023, then the crash in 2024. And now this uneasy rebound. What's fueling all this volatility? What's at the heart of it all? Well, there are a few key factors at play. First, we've got this overcapacity in China's lithium processing sector. Okay, China's a big player in this. They are. Huge processing capacity. Mm -hmm. Then we've got this underinvestment in lithium supply chains, especially in many Western countries. Interesting. They've been slow to react to the rising demand. I see. And lastly, layered on top of all of this, is this rising tide of you know geopolitical nationalism. Countries wanting to protect their own interests, especially when it comes to strategic minerals like lithium. Yeah, I can see that. It's becoming a national security issue almost. Exactly. Those three forces together have created this perfect storm of price fluctuations. So we saw lithium prices bottom out, what was it, around $15,000 per ton in early 2024? Yeah, that was the low point. And they've since bounced back to about $22,000 per ton this quarter in 2025. But as we said, it feels a little shaky, doesn't it? It does. Like this rebound isn't completely sure-footed yet. Yeah, it's a bit precarious. So let's connect this to the global production picture. Australia, they're the top dog when it comes to raw lithium production, aren't they? They are. They're extracting it from the earth at a massive rate, mostly in the form of spotamine, you know. Spotamine, right. Yeah. That's a key lithium-containing mineral. Exactly. But here's the catch, and this is important. Almost all of that spotamine gets shipped off to China for refining. Australia doesn't have much domestic refining capacity. Hold on. So they're mining all this lithium, but they're sending it all to China to be processed. That's fascinating. It is. And it has significant implications. While they lead in raw lithium production, their actual influence on global prices is dwindling. So you're saying Australia might be the biggest supplier, but they're not necessarily calling the shots? Exactly. The Chinese refiners, they're the ones controlling that crucial midstream processing stage. And they're increasingly dictating the terms. They have tremendous leverage in the global lithium market. Essentially, they're setting the prices, controlling the flow. Wow, that's a lot of power. It is. Okay, so Australia is the resources giant, but China seems to hold the real power cards when it comes to refining. Let's shift our focus to North America now, the U.S. and Canada. There's been so much talk, especially in the U.S., about building a domestic lithium industry. Right. A lot of ambition. Yeah. Big ambitions. The Inflation Reduction Act, the Battery Belt Initiative, all these plans. But how much lithium are they actually extracting right now? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Because there's a big gap between policy goals and on the ground realities. Are you saying they're not walking the walk? Not as quickly as their talk might suggest. Take the Sacker Pass project in Nevada. Phase one is operational, yes but it's facing all sorts of roadblocks. That project has been in the news a lot and not always for good reasons. Right, there are major hurdles. Political issues, right? Political, environmental. Opposition from tribal groups, environmental lawsuits. It's really slowing things down. So it sounds like the U.S. is putting a lot of focus on building out that downstream capacity, like battery manufacturing, but actually getting the raw lithium out of the ground is proving to be a lot harder than they might have anticipated. That's a very astute observation, and yeah. it's a big vulnerability. Okay, so what about Canada? They seem to be playing their cards a little differently, don't they? They are. They're a bit more under the radar, you could say. Yeah, I was thinking that. It's not as loud or attention-grabbing, but they have huge hard rock lithium reserves. They do, particularly in Quebec and Ontario. 
And they're quietly building those export relationships with both the U.S. and the EU. Strategically positioning themselves. It's a smart play. They might not be making as much noise, but they're making moves. Definitely. And on the ESG front, the environmental, social, and governance side of things. Right. ESG. Everyone's talking about that these days. Canada is often seen as having a cleaner ESG profile than some other major lithium producers. So more sustainable and ethical practices. Yes. And that could become a huge advantage in the future as pressure grows for responsibly sourced materials. Yeah, I can see that. But it sounds like Canada also has that refining bottleneck similar to the U.S. That's right. They're both lacking in that crucial midstream capacity. So they're either struggling to extract enough lithium or they're sending it elsewhere to be processed. This refining stage, it's like the missing piece of the puzzle for North America, a major gap in their strategy. A hundred percent. Without significant investment in refining, North America will continue to be heavily reliant on others for that crucial step in the battery supply chain. And that makes them vulnerable. Right. It makes them vulnerable. Okay, so we've talked about the biggest raw lithium producer. We've talked about North America's aspirations and challenges. Now let's turn our attention to Europe, specifically Germany. It might seem like a surprising contender in this lithium race. A bit of a dark horse, maybe. <laughs> exactly. But it's not just about the Tesla Giga factory near Berlin. There's more to their strategy, isn't there? Oh, absolutely. And it's potentially game changing. Okay, tell me more. They're looking at geothermal lithium extraction. Oh, yeah. That's the one where they extract lithium from brine deep within the earth, right? Right. They've got these significant geothermal resources in the upper Rhine Valley. Mm -hmm. Companies like Vulcan Energy are working to scale this technology. And if they succeed, if they can make it commercially viable, what are the potential benefits there? Huge benefits. First, Germany could become the EU's main source of lithium reducing their reliance on imports. Self-sufficiency for the EU, that's a big deal. It is. And second, this technology is tied to geothermal energy production. So <laughs> it has major environmental advantages over conventional mining. So it's a cleaner, greener way to get lithium. Exactly. Two birds, one stone. But this is all still very early stage, right? It is. Early stage and not without its challenges. What are the main hurdles they have to overcome? The biggest one is cost. Geothermal lithium extraction is expensive, and scaling it up to meet industrial demand, that's a major challenge. So it's one thing to have a successful pilot project. Right. It's another thing entirely to produce lithium at a scale and price that can compete globally. Exactly. It's a big leap. But Germany seems to be really pushing this. They've got the EU's Critical Raw Materials Act. They're really trying to secure those on-continent sources. They are. They're using industrial policy, throwing money at this. It's a serious commitment. And it's not just the government. You've got big German companies like BASF, BMW. They're making direct deals for lithium supplies. Bypassing the traditional traders. Cutting out the middleman. They're serious about this. So while other countries are focusing on just getting more lithium out of the ground or building more batteries, Germany's strategy is more about technological innovation. It's a risk, but it could pay off big time. It could. If they can crack this geothermal extraction challenge, they could jump ahead of everyone else. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground here. Australia as the top miner facing those pricing pressures. Huh. The U.S. and Canada with their ambitions and their refining gap. That midstream challenge. And then Germany, the potential disruptor with their focus on technology. So let's come back to our main question. Who is actually winning this lithium race as of right now in 2025? Well, based on the current landscape, and what the experts are saying, it seems like China still holds the upper hand, at least in the short term. Interesting. Even though they don't necessarily mine the most lithium. Right. But they dominate the refining. About 60% of global capacity. Wow. 60%. That's significant. It is. And they control even more of the production for crucial battery components like cathodes and anodes. We're talking 80%. So they've got that midstream downstream control. That gives them a lot of power. A lot of power. And that's why, for now, they're in the lead. But what about the long game? Looking further down the road, how do things look? It's shaping up to be a real battle between those countries with the resources, the lithium deposits, and those who can master the refining. It's not enough just to have the lithium. You need to be able to process it efficiently, sustainably. Right. The whole supply chain matters. It does. And then there's the wild card. The wild card. Canada. It's a hypothetical but a plausible one. What if Canada invests heavily in building out its refining capacity. And then what if they form a strong partnership with the U.S., 
a united front on refining and battery production. A North American lithium powerhouse. Exactly. That could shift the balance of power significantly. By 2030, North America could be in a dominant position. That's a big if, though, isn't it? It is. What are the potential roadblocks there? Well, for starters, it requires more than just talk. It needs serious investment, streamlined permitting processes, oh. a coordinated effort across government and the private sector. It would be a huge undertaking. Like a, what, a Manhattan Project for critical minerals? Something like that. A massive national effort. Okay, so North America has the potential, but they need to step up their game. Big time. Definitely. And what about the other players? Australia, Germany, where do they fit in this long-term picture? Australia, they'll likely remain a major supplier of the raw material. But they need to address their refining capacity issue. They need to get more control over that process if they want to have real staying power in this race. Yeah, if they want to have a seat at the table when the prices are being Exactly. And Germany, their future depends on those geothermal technologies. If they can yeah. make them work on a commercial scale and keep costs down, they could become a major lithium supplier for Europe. And not just any lithium, ethically sourced green lithium. Right, that's a big part of their strategy. It is. So it sounds like as of 2025, there isn't one clear winner in this lithium race. It's a complex game with different players leading in different areas and everyone facing their own unique challenges. It's constantly evolving, isn't it? Absolutely. And that's what makes it so interesting mm -hmm. and unpredictable. So to wrap things up, I have a final thought for everyone listening. As we think about the future of lithium, is it destined to become the new oil? You know, a resource that's so strategically important that it could lead to international tensions, even conflict? Or is it more likely that it'll just become another speculative bubble, another commodity that goes through booms and busts? That's the big question, isn't it? It is. And based on everything we've discussed today, who do you think is currently leading the lithium race? Let us know your thoughts. We'd love to hear your perspectives, share your thoughts with us on social media, and be sure to join us next time when we delve into the fascinating world of cobalt. Another critical mineral. Until then, stay informed about these energy and mineral developments. They're shaping our world. That they are. Thanks for listening.